sharpness. So sharpness is a sound quality metric, and it's aimed at quantifying the high frequency content in a signal. Okay, so if I've got two signals, two vacuum cleaners, or two uh, cooling fans or something, and I want to know which one has more high frequency content, if I calculate sharpness for both of them, I will calculate a difference if there is indeed a difference in the amount of high frequency content. Okay, so the more high frequency content, the sharper that sound is said to be. And the unit of sharpness is acum, and one acum is defined as a one kilohertz sine wave at 60 decibels with a plus or minus 80 hertz bandwidth. So that narrow band tone, if you will, at 60 decibels is the definition of one acum. And then everything goes based on that calculation. Sharpness has uh, a standard. There is a DIN standard, 45692. There are multiple formulations. I'm going to show you those. They're all very, very similar. They all are after the exact same thing. They just have a little bit uh, different take on how best to do it. This plot here, despite being shown in red, red and green, is just two very familiar test signals, white noise and pink noise. And if you're familiar with the definition of those two test signals are, white noise means it has equal amplitude at all frequencies in the narrow band. So 10 hertz, 11 hertz, et cetera, all have the same amplitude. Pink noise, on the other hand, is designed to be equal in amplitude in the one-third octave spectrum, okay? And so as a result, shown in red here, pink noise, because we, you know, sum twice as much uh, frequency information as we go up in the octaves, it has to have a continually falling sort of high frequency content uh, in the narrow band, okay? So if I calculate white noise is green here, nice and flat in the narrow band, Pink noise is con continually falling in the narrow band. And so if I calculate the sharpness of these two, white noise is sharper, 2.84 acums versus 2.15. And you see we can objectively measure how much sharper white noise is than pink noise. Okay, and if I were to play these both for you, one just has a, a, a more, dis white noise has a much more distinctive, I call it bacon frying sizzle, to it than pink noise, which sounds more like a waterfall or something. It's really low frequency dominated, uh, but you hear the difference when you play them back to back. So let's take a look at these different formulations. Uh, DIN 45692 and Zwicker's sharpness are both formulated with this formula here, sharpness being S, and then we have some key components. And this Integral here, you see this bark band from zero bark all the way up to 24 bark. So over the bark bands, you're integrating the specific loudness across all the bark bands. And this term is both in the numerator and the denominator of this ratio. But the numerator were also, so this represents total loudness. So the loudness of the full frequency spectrum in the bark band using the critical band rate. The numerator, we're also multiplying by this penalty function, if you will, or sharpness function. Uh, there's also a normalization constant. But this weighting factor, which is given here, and so you see the difference between DIN 45692 and the Zwicker is really just how quickly does this weighting factor increase as a function of increased frequency up here near the 22, 23, 24 bark band. So starting around 3,100 hertz or so, we start penalizing frequency content in terms of sharpness, rather. It's not really penalizing, but we get an increased impact the more content that there is out here, okay? So you take the total loudness weighted to the higher end of the frequency, and then you sort of normalize the whole thing by the total loudness, and you get the sharpness value. This normalization constant is here is just to make sure that when we have 60 dB at the one kilohertz uh, sine wave, we end up with calculating one acum of sharpness. Okay, so that's what this K factor is. It's just to make sure that we get the definition of acum out of our calculation when we put that in. So it's the weighted loudness versus divided by the total loudness. Okay. 
you know, depending on Bound Bismarck or the DIN standard, you would weight that high frequency content slightly differently. There's also ORE's sharpness, which is remarkably similar. You have a normalization constant. You still have the total loudness in the numerator and the denominator. You're still multiplying it by a weighting factor. But this weighting factor is now a function of loudness. Okay. And so what ORE's is saying is as a given signal with its high frequency content, as that signal itself gets louder and louder, I perceive more and more sharpness. And so his weighting factor is actually a function of the loudness. Um, so the louder a sound gets, the more sharp it will calculate using the ORE's calculation. So if I take this signal shown here in the red in the top part of this graph, you see the sone value, the loudness increases over the 20 seconds. And I compare ORE sharpness in red down here to the blue and green are DIN and Zwicker sharpness. And you see the blue and the green remain constant in terms of their sharpness calculation, even though the loudness is increasing here. But the ORE sharpness starts out right in line with the blue and the green, but then gets louder and more and more sharp as the signal gets louder. Okay, so you see the effect of the increased loudness in the increased sharpness. As a result, you need to be very careful using ORE sharpness with very, very low loudness signals as this can cause the denominator to approach zero and you can get some mathematical anomaly. All three of these appear in test lab. I'll show you that. And so you should get the same trends between the three, but you might want to note in your report sharpness value of four acums calculated with DIN 45692. Okay.